Over the past couple of weeks, I've mostly been working on trying to make my game look good. I think it's important during the prototyping phase to make sure that I can hit the entire visual range of what I want. Not necessarily putting the final coat of paint on the game, but at least making sure that the right hooks are in place for when I'm ready to add things. And as a nice side effect, it'll make my gameplay videos on YouTube look a little bit nicer. But first, a quick announcement. A few people were curious if they could support me, so I decided to go ahead and make a Patreon and a GitHub sponsors page. Of course, I'm extremely grateful that people are willing to support me financially, and I really appreciate it. So if you're one of those people, thank you. And if you're not one of those people, then that's totally fine, and I hope you enjoy this video all the same. Alright, announcement over. First thing I did was make an attack animation. I actually stole the style of animation from a game called Archvale because I thought it looked really cool. It also has the added benefit that the animation is captured entirely in code, so I don't have to individually animate each weapon. Next I added drop shadows to all the characters. This really helped the sprites pop out of the screen and give the scene a lot of depth. I've considered adding shadows beneath the projectiles as well, but I'm worried it might make the player question where they need to dodge. Should they dodge the shadow or the projectile? So I decided to leave the projectiles without a shadow and I think I'll try to make them pop with their color instead. I wanted to remove health bars, I felt like they were cluttering the screen, but without a player health bar it was really hard to tell when you got hit. So I added some screen shake by adding a dampened sinusoid to the camera position and oscillating it over time. I think it turned out pretty nice and it gives just enough rumble without being too nauseating. The other challenge with removing health bars is that it now becomes hard to tell if a monster gets damaged. So I added some damage numbers which would pop up and fade away. Before this my rendering library didn't support text border so I had to add that feature too. It ended up not being too hard to add. When I generate the font atlas I run a box filter across each text glyph. Then if a pixel is white I make the neighboring pixels black, obviously skipping pixels that were already white. Then to round everything out I added a small explosion and a little bit of character flashing to show that some damage was actually taken. I wanted to make an enter the gungeon-esque dodge roll to make the combat mechanics a bit more interesting, but I realized it would force me to animate dodge roll animations for all character equipment. So I opted to do a dash instead, even though I thought the roll looked a little bit better. To make it look a bit more realistic, I decided to do a little squeezing and stretching on the character sprite and I also spit out a few dust particles along the path. I spent a good amount of time trying to hit the visual style that I wanted for my game, but I kind of realized that I'm not good enough as an artist to nail really what I wanted. So in the meantime I decided to use some asset packs and develop my art skills a little bit along the way. I found a few really nice asset packs on itch.io by a creator called 0x72, so I started using those. The cohesion of the asset pack really made the game feel a lot more put together. This even ended up motivating me to make a few more monsters. So now we have an orc, a slime, an evil mage, and an earth golem. Each one has a different attack pattern and a slightly varied movement pattern. I'll eventually work on making the monsters a bit more unique, but for now I think it's good enough. I think two devlogs ago, I talked about how it really wasn't that hard to maintain my own world editor. Well, I was wrong. Turns out that it's enough effort for me not to want to do it anymore. In an effort to simplify my life and my development, I switched to LDTK as a map editor. It has a lot of nice features like the ability to place regions and the ability to build tile maps really easily. I'm kind of using it in a weird way though. Because I want to procedurally generate some content, I need to auto tile myself. As an example, if I'm generating a dungeon and I connect two rooms, I have to auto tile the rooms together myself. I can't easily rely on LDTK because it pre-tiles everything beforehand. So I mostly just use LDTK as a basic map builder. Next I went to work on the main menu. Before, I had just a single menu where, when you log in, you instantly join the game. I decided to separate the login action from the join game action, which required some netcode refactoring. Now I have a login message that the player uses to specify their username, and after they've logged in, I have a join game message that the player uses to join the actual game world. This more closely resembles how the player will join in the future, except I'll eventually add an authentication layer in the login menu. I also reskinned the main menu and added a sort of ember particle effect to the background, to fill out the empty space behind the menu. Overall. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. Now that I had a join game menu, I decided that when the player dies, instead of moving them back to the spawn point, I'd put them back in the join game menu. I also added a nice transition effect where the screen fades to black before switching to the menu. And finally, when you die, I'll spawn a 1 minute gravestone marker so that your legacy can live on a little bit longer. One of the pieces of feedback that I received in an earlier build was that sometimes enemies would spawn right on top of the player. To fix this problem, I decided to give players a small heads up that something was about to spawn. I call them spawn indicators, but essentially it's just an exclamation point which marks the location that a monster is about to spawn in. I send those over as a placeholder before the actual monster spawns and display them to the player. That way they can try to get to a good defensive position before the next wave attacks. Next I decided to add two new weapons, a sword and a bow. I figured it would be a good step forward towards a proper equipment system and in the meantime give the game a little bit more variety. The sword weapon is almost identical to the stick weapon except it does one more damage. The bow does a little less damage but it has some additional range. For now, when the player joins the game I just assign a random weapon but eventually I want to create some kind of loot based equipment gathering, but we can figure that one out later. I'm pretty happy with the progress I made in this devlog. The game is starting to get to a point where adding content is a lot easier, but sometimes I'll run into a wall where I have to make a large architectural change to get the behavior that I want. 
It's obviously really hard to plan for every eventuality and build the right thing the first time, so I tend to try to add features as quickly as possible in the short term and then eventually get fed up with all the tech debt and do a full rewrite of a system. This has worked surprisingly well so far, but it does get a little frustrating when I'm sitting down to rewrite the same system for the third or fourth time. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and a huge thanks to everyone who supported me so far. 